Let's go to the book of Numbers chapter 14. I'm beginning at verse number 1 through 4, just four scriptures. Number chapter 14, and I'm going to look at verses 1 through 4. It says, now this is, this is after 12 spies have gone to see the promised land that God promised. And after they, the 12 spies go, and I'll talk about this a little bit later, uh, they see that there's giants in the land and all that. And so this is them convening and talking. And so Numbers 14, that was number 13. Uh, Numbers 14 says, that night... All the members of the community raised their voices and wept aloud. All the Israelites grumbled against Moses and Aaron, and the whole assembly said to them, If only we had died in Egypt or in the wilderness. Why is the Lord bringing us to this land only to let us fall by the sword? Our wives and children will be taken as plunder. Wouldn't it be better for us to go back? Wouldn't it be better for us to go back to Egypt? And they said to each other, we should choose a leader and go back to Egypt. The title of my message today is The Gift of Goodbye. The Gift of Goodbye. The Gift of Goodbye. Push your neighbor and say, I got a gift for you. And just tell them it's the gift of goodbye, gift of goodbye, gift of goodbye. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would just do something incredible in this room. I ask for your Holy Spirit to move masterfully to touch every life here. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody say. Everybody say. Amen. Today I'm beginning a new sermon series called Hello, My Name Is. Hello, My Name Is. And uh, this sermon series is really me spending the next couple of weeks trying to reintroduce you to a part of you that maybe you don't know yet. I want you to introduce yourself to yourself so that you can see a part of you that maybe you haven't discovered. And so it made me start with last week on Easter. And uh, after Easter, seven services, one suit, praise God, it was the same suit every week. I was stinking after every service. That's why I didn't go to the lobby because I didn't want to disrespect you with how I was smelling in the name of Jesus. And so uh, I, I, after Easter weekend, me and my wife, we went away, got on a plane and we just went and took some time off and took some time away and uh, we just decided, hey, we gave everything we had, all of our energy, all of our strength to Easter weekend. Let's get away. Let's relax. And so we got away. We relaxed. But when we came back, I was still a little tired. When we came back, I was still, anybody ever needed a vacation from your vacation? It was like I had time off, but I still felt that fatigue on me. And so my wife was like, hey, why don't, why don't you just take a daycation? And I said, daycation, yeah, daycation. By myself, by yourself, go ahead, just have your day because this is a new thing. I didn't know that people do vacations by themselves. This is a thing now. This is a thing. This wasn't a thing when I was growing up. Now there are people who say, don't wait for nobody to take you on a vacation. Sometimes you need your own vacation. Come on, married people. Sometimes I just need one day. I just need one day to sleep. Just one day at Valentine. Praise God. It just, and I'll be all right. Praise God. So I took a little vacation. And I was like, man, this is cool. This is great. And as I'm talking to people, I realize that people do this. They take a vacation by themselves. As single people that I'm talking to, there's this thing now where they say, if don't nobody else take you on a date, take yourself <laughs> on a date. And so I'm at restaurants, and I'm seeing people by themselves on a date. Who are you with? Me. Having a nice date, having a nice day, having a nice, because they said don't wait for nobody. You, they, you take yourself out to the movie. Come on, I, get, I got one hand clap. I got two. No shame in your game. You're sitting in the movie theater by yourself. Had a nerve to buy two seats, praise God. <laughs> and, then it, and then there's this thing of don't wait for somebody to give you a gift by yourself. A gift. I've started this. I've started this now. Praise God. I'm like, look, I did something good. I'm by myself. A gift. Especially if the person can't get it right. Praise God. You got to do it yourself. I know what I want. <laughs> Today, I want you to give yourself a gift. Today, 
I want to talk to you about a gift that you may not know about, a gift you may not be aware of, a gift that you might desperately need but may not know you need. Today, I want to talk to you about the gift of goodbye. See, <laughs> when you get saved, the Bible says that you are born again. The Bible says you are a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, everything has become new. When you get saved and 820 people last week gave their life to Christ, some of you have been saved for a long time. When you get saved, it's like a spiritual birthday. I taught you this. Many of you, you know your natural birthday, but you really should remember your spiritual birthday and celebrate the day you gave your life to Christ because that day is special. That day means something. Today, we're going to see over 100 people get water baptized, and when we see those people get baptized, it's a spiritual birthday for them. And so because it's your spiritual birthday, the new you lives. You are a new creation in Christ. You have a new nature, which means the new you lives and the old you dies. And you got to say goodbye to the old you. Overflow. You got you to gotta give the old you the gift of goodbye. You got to say goodbye to your old way of thinking, your old way of behaving, your old way of reacting, your old way of doing things. You got to go ahead and say goodbye. Now hear me. This is not no funeral. We ain't about to be sad up in here. This is not one of those, I got to say goodbye, no boys to men taught us. It's so hard to say goodbye to yesterday. <laughs> I know they taught us uh, uh, that goodbye is bad, and there are some goodbyes that are bad. But not every goodbye is bad. In fact, that's why we call it goodbye. It's not called bad bye. It's called good bye. Because some buys are good. Some buys you need. Some buys are amazing. Some buys are the goodest thing that ever happened to you in your life. All right, overflow. I'm going to let you take a 30-second mental break. Can you remember something you said bye to that you glad that you said bye to that thing? Can you just go ahead just take... Ten seconds to say, let me think for a second. Oh, yeah, I did say bye to that thing, that person, that thing. And that was the best bye that ever happened to me. One of the best buys you could ever have is to your old life, your sinful self, your wicked nature, your contaminated self, your separated from God self, your don't know Jesus self. Man, get rid of that person. It is so good to give a, just blow a kiss. I'm so glad that I am not that person anymore, that I can say goodbye to the old me. Step away from that joker. Let it go, let it go, let it go, let it go. Let me give you some scripture. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 22 through 24. It says that you were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, to be made new in the attitude of your minds, and to put on the new self created to be like God in righteousness and holiness. Can you, can you go back, guys, can you go back and stay on that scripture for a second? Keep that up for one second. It says your former way of life. There should be a distinction between who you are in Christ and who you are outside of Christ. There's a former way of life. The Bible calls it, the Bible says, put off your old self. Just, just go ahead. Y'all want to take it off? Take off your old self. I'm just want to take it off. Yep, take off your old self. Yep, it's getting hot in here, so take off all your old clothes. Yep, I am getting so hot. Yep, take it off. <laughs> the Bible says because your old self is being corrupted by its deceitful desire. Deceitful desires mean that I thought this was a good thing, but, but, but my desire deceived me, and I realized this thing wasn't as good as what I thought. It says to be made new in the attitude of your minds. That's where it starts. It starts in the attitude of your mind. I'm thinking different. I'm, I don't think the same way I used to think. And then it says put on the new self. Put on the new self. Create it to be like God, that's who you created to be like. Be like God in what? In righteousness and holiness. That's where you're on your way to. Righteousness and holiness. That's what God wants for you. Righteousness and holiness. God doesn't want righteousness and all. Oh. God wants, good God. I didn't make the word up. The word made itself. <laughs> oh. 
overflow. Old you used to cuss people out, but you got a new nature now that has self-control over what you say. You have self-control over your body. Come on, I know you used to box back in the day, but you got self-control on when to release it and when to hold it. The old you used to always start stuff and never finish. You used to quit stuff all the time. But now you've got consistency. The Bible calls one of the fruits of the Spirit is faithfulness. Now I can be faithful over an area and not quit every other second. The old you made decisions that, that didn't care about how this decision affected everybody else. But now I got this, then now compassion ruined my life. Now I got empathy. Now I care about how my decision affects you. And my old age, I didn't have that. I didn't care about that. The old you used to do whatever you wanted to do. But now you're seeking wisdom and looking for advice and you want guidance. Why? Because your new nature now understands that I'm different. And I want you to meet the new you. I want you to discover the new you. Now, here's the problem, because there's a problem. Put your name and say, there's a problem. Overflow. Tell somebody, there's a problem. There's a problem. Here's the problem. The problem is that even though you said goodbye to old Jew, old Jew still be lurking. I feel you. Old Jew just hang around. Old Jew just still just be lingering, just still... Check on it's like an X. Some of you, you have, you, oh God. You know that X, you've been away from them for a year, two years, three years. Did I look at her? Did I look at you? Did, you feel convicted? All right. Okay. You feel convicted? All right. Let me, let me lean in. I'm just, <laughs> Some of you are the X. This person moved on. But because you, you, you that old thing that just hang around. You just text W-I-D. <laughs> and then some of y'all think you're slick. You just, you just text the air bubble. That's iPhone stuff. You just text the air bubble. Oops, I texted you by accident. I don't know how that happened. I don't know what happened. And why does your ex text you? Your ex is texting you just to check. Are you happy? Are you doing all right? Your ex is like, Bobby Brown, no, you're getting bored. Your ex just comes out. <laughs> I don't know where that came from. Just, <laughs> no, you're getting bored. Okay. <laughs> Feeling <my head. laughs> This is so bad. This is horrible. So what I'm saying is that your old self checks on you to see if you really like this Jesus thing. Your old self will send you a Facebook memory just to see it. if you're really serious about this God thing. See, you're getting baptized today. The old self will just chill, let you get baptized, come out the water crying, and they don't just wait till Thursday at lunch and just be like, so I uh, ain't been to church in five days. How you feeling? And so you got to understand, I got to give myself the gift of good by. This is what's happening with the children of Israel. The children of Israel are in the wilderness, and what happens is uh, uh, they're on their way to the promised land. They're so close. They're so close now. They finally get to the promised land, and they send 12 spies to check out the land. And when they send 12 spies to check out the land, man, they come back, and they say, OMG, this land is beautiful. It got everything we ever wanted. This is the best land I've ever seen in my life. In fact, the Bible says that they brought back clusters of grapes as proof of the fruit that is in the land, land flowing with milk and honey. They said, man, everything God said, this is it. Man, we made it. We arrived. We just got one problem. When they got to the land, there were giants in the land. There were people already occupying the land. Now, hear me. My, my initial reaction is to, all, all, obviously, we're going to beat these people up. I can't believe that y'all didn't believe. Y'all didn't trust. But, but let me defend them for a second because nobody ever prepared them. Nobody told them that when they get to the promised land that there was going to be a fight. So when they got there and they saw that this was going to be a fight, they said, forget this. I didn't, I didn't come out here for this. I thought the land was already set. I thought the land was already ready. Now that I realize this is a fight, I don't want nothing to do with this. Hear me. Let me prepare you because some of you wasn't prepared when you said yes to Jesus. What happens is when you say yes to Jesus, yes, there's a promised land, a land flowing with milk and honey. Yes, there's clusters of grapes, but there are absolutely giants in the land. There are absolutely 
these storms you got to face. I, I got to. Can we just talk? I'm not going to preach. I just want to talk. Overflow, lean in. Do you think the devil just going to let you go? You, you, you think he just going to just, you think that he done had you your whole life. And now you gone? And he's just going to let God win this one. No. Not about to let you go. I'm not about to. Matter of fact, we saw that in Egypt when Pharaoh initially, Pharaoh said, yep, let him go. Then Pharaoh said, what am I doing? Let me get my people back. The devil be thinking, all right, fine. God, you got him. They said, no, forget that. I want, my, I want my person back. I had you since you were five. I had you since you was 10. I was in your mind since you was 12. I was making you do stuff you didn't want to do since you was 21. I'm not about to let you go. I just spent the last 20 years working on you. I've actually been using you to help get more people on my team. And so now that God got you, you're about to work for him. No, no, I'm not going to let God steal you. So, of course, the enemy brings storms in your life to get you back. Of course, he tempts you to get you back. Of course he messes with you to get you back. But let me tell you something. The promised land is worth fighting for. Is there anybody in the room that can just clap and say, where I'm going is worth fighting an enemy to get to? Your marriage is worth fighting for. Seeing your kids is worth fighting for. Your peace is worth fighting for. Your joy is worth fighting for. Your mind is worth fighting Your health is worth fighting for. Your worship is worth fighting for. Your money is worth fighting for. Your wealth is worth fighting for. And, and you can't get shook because now that I'm saved, I realize that there's an enemy that may be trying to get at me. So, so let me give you a couple of keys, a couple of keys that you got to write these keys down. And uh, you guys put this on the screen. Uh, matter of fact, I missed the scripture. I want to show you what Moses said. Uh, Numbers chapter 14, verse 8 and 9. This is not Moses. This is the two spies. This is the two spies, Joshua and Caleb, who said, yes, we can go do this. Here's what they said, because I want you to say this over your life. This is, a, this is a confession I want you to make over your life. This is a scripture that I want you to start repeating over your own life, right? It says that the Lord, Justin, this is great when you're talking about tagging. It says, if the Lord is pleased with us, he will lead us into that land, a land flowing with milk and honey. He will give it to us. You see that? God will give you what belongs to you. Whatever belongs to you, the Lord will give it to you. The Bible says, only do not rebel against the Lord. And don't be afraid of the people of the land. Because we will devour them. We will devour them. Their protection is gone. But the Lord is with us. Do not be afraid of them. Hear me. Don't ever get scared when you hear, oh, the enemy, oh, demonic influence, oh, this is witchcraft. Oh. Uh-uh, 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 uh-uh. Their, their protection is gone. I, I got the, the Lord of hosts is on my side. I got the God of the armies on my side. I'll never forget, I had a conversation with my grandfather and I grew up in a church where they didn't want you to go to the movies. They believed that the devil was in the movie theater. So they said, don't go to the movies because the devil's in the movies. So my whole life, my friends would go to the movies. And I stand outside the movie theater saying, man, I, I wish I could go in there. But, man, I ain't trying to go in there because the devil is in the movie theater. And then I started getting the word on the inside of me. And I started realizing I had the anointing of the Lord. And I started realizing I got the power of the Holy Spirit. I told my grandfather one day, I was, became a man. I said, Grandpa, I'm going to the movie. He said, don't go to the movies, grandson. The devil's in there. I said, well, he got 20 minutes because I'm on my way. He better scoot on over because when I get in there, I'm about to come in there. And the Holy Spirit is coming in there with me. And the anointing is coming in there with me. And the power of God is because greater is he that is in me than he that's in the world. I can do all things through Christ who gave me the strength. Matter of fact, I saw a scripture say the devil's under my feet. So I guess he's going to be standing under me while I'm eating popcorn. At some point, you got to stop being shook. And you got to realize the power that you have. Overflow. Here's some points I want you to have. Number one, no matter how tempting it looks, never go back to the OG. Can you keep that up for a second so they can take a picture or write that down? Or, no matter how tempting it looks, never go back to the old you. Don't go back to Egypt. Don't go back to Egypt. They sit here talking about going back to, to Egypt, going back to Pharaoh. And hear me, they spent 400 years praying to get out of Egypt. 
Ain't it crazy how you will go back to something you spent years asking God to get you out of? I mean, pray 21 after pray 21. Don't make me pull out cards because you wrote it down. God, get me out of this only to get me out of this. And now I'm thinking about going back. Man, maybe I should go back to Egypt. Maybe I should go back. Maybe I should go back. Maybe I should. No, 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 no. You work too hard to get out of that relationship. You work too hard to go back. Now, hear me, hear me. I'm not talking about things that were good for you. I'm not talking about things that were, that was God's will for your life. There's some things that God said, no, you need to go back to that because that was me. You got rid of the wrong thing. I'm talking about the thing that we know that's not in God's purpose, God's will, God's plan. We know it's toxic. We know it's corrupting. We know that it's messing with us. And God's saying, hey, don't go back. Which means you may have to burn some bridges. You're going to have to close some doors. You're going to have to get rid of some music. I don't, I don't see some people, there's some music I can listen to that you can't. Because that music is associated with, with an old part of you. That when you hear it, old you rises up. As soon as you hear it, ATL, ATL, here we go. Back in the day, I used to, no, turn it off. You just went all the way back. The yard, the yard, Okay. You may have to change jobs. Because that job is a trigger of something that you used to be. You may have to get rid of a tattoo. We just had a celebrity who had to remove tattoos because she said the tattoos were, they were demonic. There was something that was attached to something in my life. I'm not saying every person, I'm saying every one, but if the Holy Spirit is speaking to you, you know that every time I see it, it does something to me. It takes me back to a part of my life that I no longer want. And I'm just saying, I'm just saying, Holy Spirit, you got to ask Holy Spirit, what are the things in my life that for me, I can't do? There's some things that, there's some jokes I can't, there's some movies that I watch, my wife said I can't watch that. My wife my wife used to have a cussing spirit on her. I did put your business. I don't, I mean, I'm not going to talk. I tell, my, I tell myself every week. My wife is in high school. She said she used to cuss like a sailor. I guess what they say, cuss like a sailor. So... <laughs> So I can, I watch a movie and it's cussing, it don't do nothing to me. Cause I never, I wasn't like a cusser like that. My wife be like, I can't listen to it. I'm like, babe, it's just a little word. No, I, you don't understand. If I hear a little, I'm gonna. <laughs> so she like, I can't do it. I'm, I can't. I'm. <laughs> she don't even play cuss. Like, you know what I mean? You don't even play cuss. <laughs> if this wasn't on YouTube, I'd teach you what play cuss. You know, we use, you know what I mean? Like, darn. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just like, she don't even play cuss. I can't do it. It's too close. It's too close to the real thing. <laughs> Whew, I'm going to get in trouble. You will be tempted to go back. And I'm going to tell you when you're going to be tempted to go back. When your Christianity gets hard. Amen. When Christianity gets a little tight. When you don't feel that overwhelming joy. When you are in between prayers, when you're in between prayers, all of a sudden you start getting tempted to go back to Egypt. Every time God sent quail, manna, water, they were like, cool, all right, cool, all right, all right, cool. As soon as it got hot, as soon as we got hungry, as soon as we got thirsty, all of a sudden, you know what, forget this, I'm going back. And so what happens is you join a church, and when you get into a church, Someone is rude to you in the church. And you say, I'm going back to Egypt. This is why I was, I'm just going back to Egypt. You prayed for something, didn't get it. And so now I'm going back to Egypt. I'm just going back to Egypt. This, this thing is harder than what I expected it to be. 
So I'm just going back to Egypt. And God is saying, no, give the gift of goodbye. You're not going back. Don't, don't go back. Don't go back. Don't go back. Don't go back. Put Romans up. Put Romans chapter 6, verse 20, 22. It says, when you were slaves to sin, you were free from the control of righteousness. Overflow. Write this down. What benefit? What benefit? What benefit did you reap? at that time from the things you are now ashamed of. Those things result in death. Now that you have been set free from sin and have become slaves of God, the benefit you reap leads to holiness and the result is eternal life. Let's have a real conversation. What benefit did sin have for you? Sin was not your friend. Matter of fact, says you was a slave to sin. Sin wasn't your friend, it was your master. Sin told you what to do. Sin punked you. Sin controlled you. Sin said, get up and slap that person. Sin said, stay in bed, don't go to work. Sin told you what to do. And how are you going back to sin? Don't you remember? You hated the way you felt. You hated the way you looked. You didn't like the way you were living life. You hated the things you were doing. You hated the people you were around. You didn't like those environments. That's why you got out. That's why you ran out. That's why you said yes to Jesus. And now that things are hard, you want to go back and be a slave to sin? Don't you remember? Remember what kind of master sin was? Sin was not a pleasant master. No, sin was making you do stuff you hated. Sin was trying to kill you. Sin was trying to get you in jail. Sin was trying to make you broke and lose everything that you had. Sin wanted you in a mental health institution. Sin wanted you on medication for the rest of your life. Sin was trying to dominate your mind. Sin was trying to drive you into suicide. Sin was trying to kill you. Ain't it crazy how we glamorize the past? Since I said something about my wife, let me tell her myself. My prom night, my prom night. Babe, I don't even know if you know the story. You Maybe you know the story, maybe you don't. My prom night, I didn't take my wife to the prom. We didn't know that we weren't dating. So I, my prom night, I took this girl to the prom, and I was around a group of friends. We all got in cars after my high school prom, high school prom. We all got in cars, and... Uh, and as we're driving down the street, it's like, it's like 1 in the morning. And so we're out just hanging out and just being goofy. And so we decide to race down the street in our car. So, so I'm in a car, and uh, I got a friend. Now. I'm trying to impress this girl, right? So I'm trying to show her that I'm a boss, right? And then I got my friend over there. He's got his girl. And I got a friend over there. And we take off, <laughs> driving down a highway, speeding. It's dumb. It's stupid. It's dangerous. I was 18, and I'm just chilling with my friends. Just, we drive down the street. As we drive down the street racing, and I'm winning, and it's fun, and we laughing, all of a sudden, police come out of nowhere. As the police come down, there's three of us. Police coming, and I'm sitting there driving. Now, I'm the Christian. I was still a church kid, even though I was doing dumb stuff. So I got conviction, right? I, I'm... <laughs> ah, my grandfather taught me, if I can go to the movies, I'm definitely not about to, I run the police. My friends are like, keep going, keep going. Don't let them catch us, don't let them catch us. And so I'm like, oh, God, oh, God. And my friends are like, yeah, don't let them catch us. One police, three cars. And so I got a friend to go, boom, go out that way. I got a friend to go, boom, to go that way. And here I go, woo, I pull right on over. I have my license, <laughs> stuck it out the window. I'm crying. This girl's looking at me like, you a punk? You a punk? You ain't never a punk. I'm just like, Jesus, I'm sorry. I'm scared out of my mind. I'm covered by officers. They're all over the place and surrounding the car. And I'm feeling like a fugitive. And <laughs> only the grace of God. I got a bad, horrible ticket. They let me go. Okay. And I just remember being like, man, I was crazy. Now, I, that was when I was 18. I'm 40 years old, okay? I promise you, when my friends, not friends anymore, but when I, when I go to Boston and we start talking, they be like, yo, man, remember that day? <laughs> Y'all remember? Because, you know, we used to be back in the day. <laughs> remember? <laughs> 30 and over, 30 and over, 30 and over. 40 and over, 40 and over. Remember back in the day, remember that prom night? Yeah, remember we was racing? Yeah, remember the police almost got you? That was crazy. And they're dabbing each other up. And I'm like, no, 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 no. That was a horrible night. <laughs> almost got killed. <laughs> we could have killed somebody. <laughs> I 
I pay the ticket. Many of you are paying a price for a lifestyle that your friends laugh at. You remember when we know I almost died? No, no, you almost got me killed. No, 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 no. I had to fight three girls over you. What are you talking about? No, I was drunk out my mind, hit my head on the floor. I was having my, my head in a toilet all night. I don't want to go back to that. Sin always looks fun. When we look at it 10 years ago, girl, remember it? No, I don't want to remember. That was horrible. I was depressed. What? We're not laughing about what? I lost my mind over that. I lost years of my life doing that. This ain't funny to me. And that's what we want to do. We want, we want sin to be laughing. <laughs> I remember, remember that night. No, I do remember. I felt horrible when we were done. So don't go back. Come on, push your neighbor and say, don't go back. Come on, push your neighbor and say, don't, don't go back. Number two, write this down. You got to build a new life that your old life can't compete with. You got to build a new life that your old life can't compete with. You know why we get tempted to go back? Because we don't have a tomorrow to look forward to. What's your promised land? Overflow. What, what, you, what you building? Maybe sin look good because you ain't, you ain't painted a good enough picture of righteousness yet. What you going after? What you trying to accomplish? What you trying to get done? This, don't, don't get saved and start thinking small now. Don't get saved and all of a sudden get conservative. No, 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 no. No, I'm going for it. I'm going for it. I'm trying to, I'm trying to be healthy and wealthy. No, I'm trying to I'm trying to build something in my life. I'm trying to build this family. I'm trying to build my mind. I'm trying to, trying to build my steam. I'm trying to do something. No, this is the year to go after it. This is not the year to take it easy. This is the year to put your foot on the gas. You, you free now. You, you've got God now. You, you got Holy Spirit now. What you doing? What you doing? What we working on? What we building? I promise you, when we, I, 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 I'm always, I'm not a person uh, that is, uh, I'm not trying to be arrogant and, and even the numbers of, the number amount of people we seen on, on Easter, uh, I, I wasn't posting online. I wasn't online looking at our numbers on our stuff. But don't get it twisted. When, when me and my wife got in our private moment and we're looking at each other, we say, girl, look what we doing, girl. How, how do we get here? Two people from the projects in Boston. What are we doing, girl? How we, but we ain't got no big name. We ain't got no big name. How are we doing this? Because we, we building something. We, we excited about something. We, we working on something. And, and maybe the reason why you want to go back to Egypt is because you don't know how good the grapes are and the land that you're getting ready to go to. But God is saying, get a dream back. Get, get something in your heart. Get that goal. Get a target. Write something down. Build something. Make something. You can make something happen now. Now, if you did all that when you was in sin, how much more can you do now that you're in salvation? Now that you got God and joy and peace, what can you build now? I don't, I, I'm, I'm going to be honest. I want everybody to come to this church. I really do. But I'm not just trying to pastor just church people. I want some people coming here saying, Pastor, we're getting it done. We're making some stuff happen. We, we moving and shaking. We we out here getting some, we dominating out here. I was, uh, you got to remember who you have. I was, uh, me and my wife went to a hotel a couple of uh, uh, weeks ago, and we were staying in a hotel that was like a five-star hotel. It was out of state, wasn't in North Carolina. And so we're in this fancy hotel, feeling bougie and feeling great. And so I'm sitting in the line. It's a true story. I'm sitting in the line at the hotel waiting to check in, and, uh, and uh, a guy comes out who's the owner of the, of the hotel. When he comes out, owner hotel comes out, he said, Pastor Brian, what are you, what are you doing up in my hotel, man? What are you doing here? I said, oh, man, we here in town and blah, blah, blah. And he said, man, what, what, man, how come you didn't call me? How come you didn't tell me you was coming here? We would have got you the presidential, da, da, blah, blah. We would have put you in the, blah, 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 blah. Don't you ever come here and not call me, man. He looked at the people, hey, whatever he will give him whatever he want. Man, call me next time. You, whatever he needs, you give it to him. Blah. That happens to me so often. I, I'll be in a line at a restaurant just waiting at a restaurant, just sitting there. And somebody will come out, and general manager will come out and be like, P Pastor Brian, from here in church, what are you doing in line? Get out of that line. Hey, man, get him a table. Da -da -da. You know what I'm, you know, I'm being humble like, oh, no, no, no. no. no it's just, you know, come on. Get, get him in here. What are you talking about? Get up here. Because sometimes it's not about what you have. It's about who you know. 
And for some of you, you're sitting in the line, and God, God's like, call my name. Don't you know I can get you in front of the line? Don't, don't you know you got God on your side? Call me. Just, why aren't you talk? Call my name. What are you doing all the way in the back? I got faith. Don't you know how much favor you have? Don't you know how much Holy Spirit you have? Don't you know how much power you have? Say something. If your life is boring, it's your fault. Your life is whack, that's on you. If you're not excited about your life, don't blame you. That's you. <laughs> Romans 8:11 says, the Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. And just as God raised Christ Jesus from the dead, he will give life to your mortal bodies by this same spirit living within you. We already know that the spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, now lives in you. What are you doing with that power? What you doing with that power? You're not calling out nothing? You're not speaking nothing by faith? You're not calling those things which are not as though they were? You're not prophesying and confessing? See, you keep prophesying doom and gloom in everybody else's life. Why don't you prophesy prosperity on your own life? Instead of trying to curse everybody else, why don't you bless yourself? These doom and gloom prophets, a lot of times you doom and gloom because you, your own life ain't what it needs to be. And so I just want everybody's life to be as bad as mine. No, no, you got to stand up and say, no, I'm, I'm the head, not the tail. Yeah. I'm above, not beneath. Yeah. I'm a lender, not a borrower. Great God's on my side. Put something down today that just blows your mind. God, if you do this, this is just, do, do this. Number three, you guys can pick up on my mic. Number three, trust God with every area of your life, not just a few. You know what God wants? God wants you to trust him. Trust that he knows the way for you. Trust that his promised land that he has for you is better than anything you have for yourself. The reality of the situation is that the children of Israel simply just did not trust God. They did not. God wants your trust. Matthew 16, verse 24, then Jesus told his disciples, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself. Take up his cross. Follow him. God says, I want your marriage. I want your money. I want to be involved. Justin, I was so prophetic. Just tag him in. God said, I want, I, what area of your life are you keeping God out of? Give the goodbye. Keep bringing me those, bring me those shirts. Um, imagine you're a trainer, and your trainer says to you, all right, are you ready to get healthy? Yes. I'm ready to get healthy. Are you ready to go to the gym? Yes. I'm ready to go to the gym. Are you ready to get in shape? Yes, yes. Oh, hallelujah. I'm ready to get in shape. All right, but I need you to give me control of every area of your life. Yes, yes, control every area. Yes, yes. What's in your hand, though? Oh, these. These are chips. You can have everything, but just don't touch my chips. I will eat apples. I will, I will drink water. I will... Go to the gym five days a week. I'll stretch in the morning. I will, but what I will not do is release these chips. You can have whatever. You want to touch my breakfast? Go ahead. You want to change my lunch? Go ahead. And so here you are. You're going to the gym five days a week. And here you are stretching in the morning and drinking more water. But you are not losing the weight that you should lose because there's still an area of your life that you won't stop digging into. You won't stop going into it. And God is saying, no, if you're going to really give me your life, I need every area. I need the personal area you don't want to go away with. I need the thing that you really feel like I can't live without. God says, can you let go of the bags in your hand? so that I can give you eternal life. God says it's time to give the gift of goodbye. If you're in this room, if you're in overflow, and uh, today's your day, you're saying, I want to give my life to the Lord today. I want to stop playing games. And Man, I just really feel not, 
it's not a conviction like I'm horrible. It's a conviction like there's more. Stop that conviction of I feel like I'm nothing, I'm worthless. That's not, that's not true conviction. True conviction is I know I'm better than this. I know there's more for me. God, the Holy Spirit will convict you of your righteousness to remind you who you are. Today is a day where you can make a decision to make Jesus the Lord of your life. And all you got to do is repeat a simple prayer. And I repeat, you repeating the prayer because the prayer just allows me to give you the language to clarify what's in your heart. And so whatever that was, I just pray it out. That was, let it release it. Let it go. I don't know what that was, but let it out. Let it out. I need everybody back. <laughs> God setting people free, y'all. He's setting people free. <laughs> Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for loving me. Thank you for sending your son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to die for me. Today, I give you my life. Today, I give you my chips. I give you everything in my life. I surrender all to you. I believe Jesus is Lord, and I believe today I belong to you. In Jesus' name, let everybody say.